allow me to introduce myself for those of you that haven't seen or heard any of my previous work. I'm Adam Buckley, Program Director for a private, subscription-based broadcaster that is heard in entertainment centers across North America. Previously, I've done videos about how not to get a job in radio based on the Talent for Hire section of Milkman Unlimited, Canada's premier website for radio industry professionals to find employment and check out the latest industry news while managers can post jobs and find talent. I thought I'd do things a little differently this time around, since a few months back I posted a job. Critics of my work have said, Well, the talent for hire section is free. No one ever gets a job that way anyway. Everyone on Milkman gets hired through the actual job postings. So this means people step up their game when they're actually applying for a specific job, and managers only hear from the quality people, right? Well, I'm here to tell you, that's absolutely wrong. Though I did receive several decent resumes and demos and did hire someone based on my job posting, I had to wade through a lot of garbage. Hopefully these examples will give you a good idea of what not to do when you apply for a job, whether it's in the radio business or any other industry. Note that I didn't even listen to any of these people's demos because I couldn't be bothered. I mean, since they couldn't be bothered taking the time to put some thought and care into what they sent me, why should I? I'm not alone in this. Most managers won't listen to your demo if their first impression of you is awful. Let's start with the very first thing a manager sees when they open their inbox. The subject line. It's really simple, and in many cases, the posting gives you detailed instructions on what to write in there to prove that you are actually literate. Here's some I got. Hey, Mr. Buckley, on-air personality application. Hey, we're pals. Don't say hey to me. This may sound snobby, especially for radio, but... We're not buds, certainly not yet. The Mr. Buckley part is formal, but then there's no punctuation. Is he saying hey to Mr. Buckley on-air personality application? Didn't even bother reading on. As you may have guessed, I'm a prick when it comes to spelling, so when I get a subject line like on-air surinality, I tend to just ignore whatever else is attached. And then there was this email, mp3. There's literally no contact info, no resume, no cover letter, this person just sent me a demo. This person's probably sitting around saying, Man, I've sent my demo to everyone and no one's hiring me. This economy sucks. No, you suck. I guess it was better than this person, though, who sent me nothing. Attention, Adam Buckley. Extreme ambition inside. I'm so ambitious to send you something that I didn't even bother sending it. No attachments, none. This person claims their cover letter, resume, and demo is right here, and it's not. So, they're a liar. I don't hire liars. I don't care how ambitious they are. Back to spelling. Your cover letter or introduction email should actually be in English when you're applying for an English job, especially when applying for a job where you're going to be communicating with people and representing the station. People say, well, whatever, no one writes perfectly anymore. It's the internet. This excuse doesn't fly with me at all. Does this go on in other languages, I wonder? I mean, do Japanese people just leave characters out because they can't be bothered? Are the French just leaving accents off words because they figure other French people will get it? Or are English speakers just incredibly lazy? I honestly wonder about things like that. This is now more important than ever with Twitter and Facebook because you're probably going to be representing the station online. And when you spell like a fourth grader, people are going to say, Wow, how'd that person get the job? I could do their job. And once the jig is up and people realize that really, anyone could probably do this job, we're all screwed. So stop fucking it up for the rest of us. Here's a guy who's sending something to my at Nenshin. He'd like to apple pie for a job. Worse, this person is already employed by a chum radio station. So good hire, guys. You should be proud of that one. Some excellent language skills on display with our next candidate. I just graduated College of Broadcasting, and I'm in Sreech of a full-time position. Looks like the Sreech continues. Now, let's say your spelling and grammar is actually pretty decent. The subject line didn't make me just hit delete right away, and you've got me to actually click on something you've sent me, assuming you actually did send me something. Perhaps you should make sure the things you're addressing are actually addressed to the right person. I'll see that Robin gets this one. What this also tells me, as if I wasn't going to figure it out anyway, is that this person is just sending form letters and changing the name on top. The resume can be the same, and even the demo to a point, because quite frankly no one knows what the hell any managers want when it comes to the demo. Some want a custom one for the station, while others think that's patronizing. Some want a minute and a half of highlights, 
some want a couple full bits, and then eventually they just hire the person with the coolest voice anyway. But with the cover letter, it should actually be specific to the job posting, mentioning things within the posting. It proves that you read it, and that you actually want that job, not just a job. I get it that you'd like to feed yourself and your family, maybe, but as a manager, I want you to want my job and to tell me why you'd be a good fit for it. Which brings me to cliches. First off, the profile or summary at the start of resumes. I don't know about other managers, but I hate it. It's useless. Just tell me what abilities you have, how they've helped other places you worked, and in the cover letter, explain how those skills will help my company. Garbage like, I'm an independent self-motivator, with a fresh style, with the ability to think quickly under pressure. It doesn't tell me anything. Also, being an independent self-motivator is redundant. You're either independent, or you're a self-motivator. They mean the same thing. And another one that kills me. Oh, wait, first off, check out this thing. Whatever professor told this girl that a jazzy resume like this would be a good idea should be banished from teaching forever. Look at this. I think it's pretty unprofessional anyway. Anyway, another cliche that kills me. Goal-oriented. Everyone on this planet is goal-oriented. Humans are naturally oriented to reach goals, goals such as getting a job, completing tasks at the job in order to keep said job, obtaining food to feed self, reaching bathroom in time before urinating all over self, etc. You might as well waste my time by telling me that you breathe oxygen. Another favorite, a motivated team player, but can also perform effectively on an individual basis. How come I read this on 90% of resumes, but 90% of the time people get group work in school, they bitch and moan? Just once, I'd like to read a resume where the person says, I don't work well on a team, but give me a task that I can do on my own and I kill it every time. I'd love for someone to be that honest, but other managers might not, so maybe word it differently. Also, don't just type words for the sake of typing. Like this nonsense. My work and sports experiences have reinforced team values and concepts towards successfully achieving goals and objectives. What does that even mean? It's just a bunch of larger words that basically say, through work and sports, I understand the value of being a team player, which I also don't want to read either, but at least it's shorter and easier to understand. Now you're probably saying, whatever, Buckley, these are all probably the same one or two people. Well, they weren't. All of these examples were taken from about 10 different people, and these were just the worst ones. However, there was one applicant who broke almost every rule. Let's call this fella Rick. Rick's subject line is, On-Air Postians. He says, Hey to my company, and proceeds to lay waste to my inbox with this grammatical explosion of nonsense. My name is Rick, and I am student at Attends Blank College. I am new exciting talent that is ready to be hired. He's ready, folks. Who wants him? I have attached to this new email, as opposed to the old one, my resume and my demo at has work I have done on air at blank. I can be reached best at this email of blank. Wow. I once vomited Alpha Getty and the result was more coherent than this. I had to continue on because this was, I mean, this is just too good. His cover letter, he makes the same weird grammatical mistake of at attends blank college then proceeds to name drop a professor. If I was that professor, I'd ask this guy to please stop using me as a reference. In fact, if I were a professor, I'd make sure every student who wants to use me as a reference has to show me their resume and cover letter first before I'd agree to it. I am a very proud that I go to college. There's a sentence fragment. He's apparently contracting me today. He breaks out the cliche about playing sports and how that makes him a team player who can also set up and do things on my own. He brings a lot of wanting to learn with him. He's a high-motivated guy. I don't really want stoners. I don't care how motivated they are. And he's a guy that will not leave until, until the job is done and done right. This cover letter wasn't done right, but he left before it was correct. This continues. He's the best man for the job because he's every versatile in his skills. He mentions the sports thing again. He's been playing on teams his whole life. Since he crawled out of the womb, he was on a team. And as we can see by his resume, he has lots of more skills, and he's edger to learn more. Well, let's see the resume. He's awesome with Adobe Audition. Who uses the word awesome in a resume? In fact, who signed off on this kid? Does this college seriously not have a screening process? He graduated first year, he made it to second year, and I assume he graduated that. 
Do they not have a class on resume writing? My school did. We did an entire semester on professional communication, but there's absolutely no way this guy went through a writing class or that a competent teacher said, yeah, this is good, let's give him a pass. If they did, they should be ashamed that they took this kid's money because he's never going to get a job in radio. This school, which will remain nameless despite every urge I have to out them as the piece of shit institute that they clearly are, should give this kid his money back, say, sorry, we're a bunch of pussies, but we didn't tell you. No one will ever hire you to do anything in this business where you'll be able to make a living. We apologize for taking your time and money. The email, resume, and cover letter should be the easiest part, but it's also the easiest part to botch. Have someone who's smarter than you check the spelling and grammar, read it two, three times yourself, make sure you actually attached files, and don't hit send until you're sure it's perfect, because you only get one chance. Program directors already like to pretend they're too important, and that they don't have time to read your resume. They're certainly not going to read it twice. If you're wondering why your phone's not ringing off the hook and why your inbox isn't full, why you're not hearing back from the dozens of jobs you've applied to, go through your sent mail folder. I mean, really give it a good scan. You might find out why. I'm Buckley, and you're welcome.